Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Indiana High School Basketball. Who's your Crossroads Conference uh, contest tonight between the Shamrocks from Westfield High School in Hamilton County and the Bulldogs of Brownsburg here. We're live from Varsity Fieldhouse on the campus of Brownsburg High School in Brownsburg, Indiana. Chris Worley joins me in the booth along with our producer, Rob Kendall. And uh, Chris, tonight, as we're about uh, nine minutes or so away from tip-off, two teams going in different directions, that's for sure. The Bulldogs, uh, uh, only two losses on the season, and currently those losses come to the number one and two teams in the state, the Carmel Greyhounds and the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. HSE really kind of did a number on the Bulldogs in their last game uh, here at Varsity Fieldhouse. Brownsburg goes on the road with a nice win at Crawfordsville uh, the next night after that and uh, has continued to play well and uh, currently find themselves uh, ranked number five in the state with a 12-2 and record. And they will be home against Westfield tonight, who is 2-12. And, and then we'll, Chris and I and Rob will be back with you tomorrow night here on AudioSportsOnline.com and XRBRadio.com as the Bulldogs take on Tri-West, the county rival who stands at 8-4. and four. So tonight, Chris, we're about eight minutes from tip-off. Give us a little perspective of what we should expect from these two teams tonight. Well, you had a good look at it there, Troy. You're right. You know, this is welcome territory, home territory for the Brownsburg Bulldogs. After that uh, big Hamilton Southeastern game, you know, that was the last game we were here. Uh, and, of course, it was a tough loss, but the Bulldogs bounced right back with three straight wins on the road at uh, Crawfordsville, at McCutcheon, and at Noblesville last Friday. So two home games here against a Westfield team, a team that's lost ten in a row, and then uh, county rival Tri-West tomorrow night. You know, you look at it on paper, Troy, and the Brownsburg should win both these games, of course, but... Of course, the coaching staff's not going to look at it that way. They want the same kind of effort, intensity, and especially on defense that the Bulldogs have played with the whole year. Yeah, I think you're exactly uh, right, Chris. And that's one of the things we've had uh, all year long from this Brownsburg team. And uh, fueled by their coach, uh, Lynch, uh, uh, Steve Lynch uh, is such an intense guy on the sideline. Has brought a lot of energy, especially defensively, to this team. And really, that last game, that loss against Hamilton Southeastern, uh, HSC just came out and really filled up the nets in the second yeah. half. That was a close game through the first half and really into the third quarter. And then it really got it kind of away from the Bulldogs. Kind of similar to what happened in the Carmel game yes. to start the season here uh, on the home schedule. Yes, you're exactly right, Troy. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, we saw Hamilton Southeast and everybody knew they was going to hit those big threes and they came out shooting them right away. Coach actually took some blame for that. He said he had them in the wrong defense. He shouldn't have started in a zone. And Hamilton Southeastern took took uh, full advantage of that. But, you, you know, that game's history now. You look at the way the team and this veteran team bounced back with such a good uh, intensity and focus. The next three road games got the job done all there. So here we go at home tonight uh, against the Westfield Conference team. Been struggling, but you look at the conference standings right now. Of course, uh, Hamilton Southeastern on top at 14-2. and two. Brownsburg next at 12-2. and two. And then a very hot Zionsville team. They're now 11-2. and two. They have won 10 straight. Uh, if you look at that Brownsburg Road victory earlier at Zionsville in the season, that gets bigger now because Zionsville's been so good. You know, Troy, Brownsburg, 8-0 on the road. Brownsburg undefeated on the road. There are two losses both coming here at home to Carmel and HSC, as we uh, said before, about a little over six, little less than six minutes from the tip-off here, or at least six minutes from the introduction of the players and the coaching staff, and then tip-off to follow shortly after that. Uh, tonight, February 7th, as we said, uh, is uh, the Bulldogs hosting the Westfield Shamrocks after tonight. We have, we're have we right back here tomorrow night, a back-to-back, the second half of that back-to-back. Uh, the Tri-West Bruins will be here at Varsity Fieldhouse tomorrow night at 730. We'll have that broadcast for you as well. February 13th, I'm sorry, the Bulldogs travel to uh, West Lafayette Harrison High School. That's a 730 tip in West Lafayette. February 18th, they are home against the Plainfield Quakers for a 730 tip. The 21st at Lafayette Jeff. And then the February 25th, they play at Perry Meridian at 7.30. That will close out the regular season, their last conference game at Lafayette Jeff on February the 21st. Some uh, quick scores. We'll just run through them real quick. Uh, uh, some girls basketball going on uh, and a county uh, boy-girl doubleheader tonight in girls basketball. Danville leads Frankfurt 34-10 to at the half. Tri-West over Southmont 38-15 to at the half. Also in girls basketball, uh, Zionsville leads Northwest 75-35, to and Noblesville has defeated Harrison 
63 to 5 and then a couple updates on those scores that tri west southmont game is now 38 to 15 at the half i'm sorry 54 to 20 at the end of three and danville leads frankfurt by 30 52 22 at the end of the third quarter you are listening to brownsburg varsity basketball on xrbradio.com wxrb 1610 audiosportsonline.com today's broadcast is brought to you by mcdonald's hendricks county estate buyers ivy tech nelson jewelers panunis Pete Fay, your state farm agent, Westside Plumbing, and Wiley Palooza. Well, uh, Westfield at 2-12, and 12, at Brownsburg at 12-2 uh, and two tonight. You're listening to Indiana High School Basketball on audiosportsonline.com and xrbradio.com. And our, I'm Troy Weimer once again. Chris Worley joins me in the booth, as always, and our producer tonight, as always, as well, is Rob Kendall. And uh, we thank you for taking some time out of your uh, night to join us and listen in on this broadcast or watch the broadcast, as you can do on audiosportsonline.com. Uh, Chris and I had wondered if the cold would keep the crowd down a little bit. It doesn't look like it really is. Uh, this is not going to be the same kind of crowd that we had against uh, Hamilton Southeast yeah, the other night where the place right. was pretty much full. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to have a good crowd on hand. They continue to file in about three minutes and 19 seconds left uh, in the uh, pregame festivities here now as the clock begins uh, to count down. Uh, the coaches uh, for Westfield, Eric Rouch, is 41-57 and 57 in his fifth year with the Shamrocks. He's 153 and 189 in his 16th year overall of coaching Indiana high school basketball. The Bulldogs are led by Steve Lynch. They're at 12 and 2. He's in his first year here at Brownsburg. Comes to us from Mount Vernon, with a career record of 115 and 54 in his eighth year overall. Yeah, tonight also here, uh, fans attending and especially the student body uh, with a cause. They're here with a red out tonight for to raise funds against cancer and uh, also a local victim, a 70 year old gentleman. I, I didn't catch his name. I'm sorry, but they are collecting funds here uh, it, throughout the crowd tonight for that fight against cancer. So good cause. Most all the student section dressed in red. We're going to have a bit of an exciting uh, halftime guest for you, one of that student body, uh, Austin Jones. He's a leader of that uh, good Brownsburg student support group, and uh, he'll be up here at halftime to visit with us, Troy. You know, I don't think these players will let down against this Westfield team. Just one more note about that. Uh, we did talk to a couple players. Maybe you heard it on xrbradio.com or WXRB at the 6 o'clock uh, 6.30 hour, uh, we interviewed uh, both, uh, Trevor Lucas and um, who else do we have on? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Big Kyle, Kyle Thompson. And both of them, they, you know, they knew that, hey, we cannot let up. We cannot let down. We're not going to let that happen. You know, we're going to provide good senior leadership to get the job done and keep the, as Kyle said, to keep the uh, pedal to the metal, keep the foot on the accelerator here to finish out these last six games before the all-important tournament time. As Chris said, it is an IU uh, Health Night tonight. IU Health Night tonight uh, at uh, Varsity Fieldhouse out in the uh, entryway where you come in to uh, get purchase your tickets and concessions. Indiana University Health with a booth there, doing some CPR instruction, handing out some uh, red beads, which have been very popular with the students, students and adults alike. We didn't get a pair yet, but yeah. uh, my son is running around here with some of his friends uh, with the red beads on. So really. Uh, a, uh, a a nice uh, nice show there by IU Health and the student body just had all dressed in red for cancer awareness. Coach Lenz gets a special escort from uh, some uh, sunglassed and sport coat wearing uh, members of the student body as they escort escort Steve Lynch uh, to the uh, bench for the Bulldogs. And I got to tell you, more and more as we get into this first season, Chris, it seems like the coach Lynch really may have just found yeah. a home here at Brownsburg. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, the students have grown to love him. On some of the road games, uh, they may have him on underneath those jackets right there, the little CIA group that es escorted him to the bench. But uh, some of the kids have uh, Steve Lynch uh, T-shirts now. It has his picture on the front, and we love Coach Lynch on the back. So we'll ask Jonesy about that at halftime. But uh, he's become popular. Of course, he's he really tests his players and challenges every one of them to get the best uh, out of each game and each practice they can. And uh, they've grown to respect him now. And, uh, believe in him and he talked about buy-in he's got to get buy-in you know this is this third coach and three seasons for these young men especially the seniors that's a tough go on them but they've bought into this system they're having great success look to continue it tonight Troy well and there's uh Westfield is one of two teams with uh an identical streak of 10 games in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference the Shamrocks have lost 10 straight wow. contests coming in tonight their record does stand at uh uh, two and twelve. Zinesville is as eleven and two on the season, and uh, they have won ten straight games. Um, Brownsburg did go up to Zinesville 
and beat them on their own court, be, uh, defeated the Eagles earlier this season. You know, one thing about fun thing about this uh, basketball season, Troy, we saw it in football, is Brownsburg had a tough football year, and they got beat by the Zionsville team. Uh, and by Zionsville, they got beat by Westfield. Guess what? She was on the other foot here in basketball. Brownsburg's been getting some of these conference wins back against those uh, football losses. The uh, 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 We're about 30 seconds away from the uh, introduction of the players and the singing of the national anthem. And a good crowd on hand tonight. I'd like to thank everybody again for joining us. Uh, you're listening to uh, Indiana High School Basketball on audiosportsonline.com and xrbradio.com. And as we said, it's IU Health Night here at Varsity Fieldhouse in uh, an effort to support Coaches versus Cancer. Uh, the uh, At least the Westfield staff is wearing their tennis shoes uh, on the sidelines tonight. I can't quite see if the Brownsburg staff is or not. But uh, we will pause here for just a moment as we ready ourselves for the singing of our national anthem. Well, the national anthem is uh, in the books, a really nice rendition by a, a member of the Brownsburg uh, student body there. And, of course, that was preceded by the sportsmanship announcement. We expect a nice crowd and a really uh, competitive game here. The Westfield Shamrocks come into the game, like we said, you know, with a 10-game losing streak and find themselves near the bottom of the Hoosier Crossroads Conference. The Brownsburg Bulldogs, the number five team in the state at 12-2. and two. This is the first night of a back-to-back uh, doubleheader as they will host the Tri-West Bruins tomorrow night. Something we can watch for from Westfield tonight here, Troy, is uh, they have a couple of football players that played uh, real star roles in their football uh, team that are here tonight as a senior, Devin Reese, number 24, just scoring the 3.5 points a game, and also Nick Ferrer, a uh, senior, scoring 4.0 points a game. Now, Westfield's uh, part of the reason for their struggles is they've been beset by injuries. There's a lot of their players that have played uh, less than the full complement of games, but they are led in scoring by number 12, the senior Ty Oswald, averaging 12 points a game, and that is by far the highest average on their team. So we'll be calling plenty of number 12 Ty Oswald tonight. And then they have role players after that. But, uh, yeah, Westfield been beset by injuries, a few other issues. So let's we'll see if Brownsburg can take care of business tonight here. We'll take a look at the starting lineups real quick. First for the Shamrocks of Westfield, uh, number 10, Jonah Welch, who's a freshman. He's 5'11". Number 30, Ian Christensen. He's a freshman. He's six foot. Number 34, or number, number 34, Kyle Nicole, 
is a sophomore at 5'9". Number 42, Nick Ferrer, is a senior at 6'4". And number 54, Sawyer Olsen, is a freshman at 6'3". So not only is Westfield uh, has a challenge with a record this year, but they're a very young team as well, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when, that, when you go through that lineup card and read uh, those names and uh, and their grade levels. That's right. Starting for the uh, Brownsburg Bulldogs tonight, as always, number three, Trevor Lucas at a guard. Number 10, Darian Ringo at the other guard. Tyler Houston and number 11. Uh, he's a six foot two senior. Number 22, KJ Walton, 6'3", and a 6'3", uh, uh, junior. And the recipe for success for the Bulldogs all year long needs to go through KJ Walton, it seems like, when it comes to the offensive end of the ball, Chris. Sure, no doubt. Uh, KJ, right now, We'll get his average here for you. And number 42, Kyle Walton is in the middle. He's 6'7", and he is a senior. Push the ball to the big man a little bit, I always say, if you can. And uh, we'll see what the offensive scheme and plan looks like tonight for the Brownsburg Bulldogs. Yeah, K.J. Walton averaging right now 20.0 points per game. Then there's a tie for second among team scores between uh, Darian Ringo, the fine point guard, a junior at 10.6, and senior Trevor Lucas at 10.6 also. Kyle Thompson uh, got in a little foul trouble there last week at Noblesville. Dalton Deshaun came on in that game last week. Uh, number 44 had his best game of the year. He didn't score any points. They got plenty of rebounds, played good defense. Let's see what kind of defense, as always, the strength of the Brownsburg Bulldogs. They'll open in tonight against Westfield. Troy, here we go. Real quick before the tip, that uh, girls basketball game between Tri-West and Southmont. It's a final Tri-West wins at 63-39. The boys here in Brownsburg have tipped off, and the opening tip goes to the Bulldogs, and bringing it down the court is Darian Ringo. Ringo gets it to Trevor Lucas on the far side. He drives, gets it to Thompson outside top of the key. Down to Walton. Walton looking to go, does not go baseline, dribbles it back out towards midcourt. Westfield back to Trevor man-to-man. Lucas. Sorry, Westfield and a man-to-man defense. Trevor Lucas is going to reset. Now K.J. Walton dumps it to Tyler Houston in the corner. He dribbles out. Thompson playing uh, outside the... Uh, Outside the arch there to start off the first quarter here, Chris. Yeah, and Coach did say they want patient offense in this game. They want a lot of touches on each possession. Lucas for three from the far corner, rattles out, and the rebound goes right to Darian Ringo, kicks it back to K.J. Walton. Walton's going to drive, takes it inside, and a nice drive for the layup. And the Bulldogs have the first hoop of the game. They lead it 2 nothing at the seven-minute mark in the first quarter. K.J. showed his great athleticism on another drive to the hoop. He likes to attack that basket. Brownsburg is starting a man-to-man defense. Nick Furr with the ball at the top of the key. Gives the ball back off to Christensen. Christensen looking in. They're going to call a travel on Christensen. So one possession, one turnover for the Shamrocks. Number 14, Aaron Bennett is actually in the game now for Westfield. Westfield going to press the entire court here. I'm kind of surprised at that. Bennett's a uh, 5'9 freshman. A lot of freshmen on this team. Very young Westfield team. Ringo drives the ball right down the right down the court. He dishes it to K.J. Walton, who lays it in, and K.J.'s got four points. Where Ringo saw that lane to the basket and got a good bounce pass to K.J. for the hoop. Four nothing. The Bulldogs lead. Westfield controls on their side of the court. They get the ball up in the far side in the in the near corner to Christensen. Christensen goes back top of the key to Fair. Fair back to Christensen. Brownsburg did start in a man-to-man defense, as expected. Welch with the ball now, top of the key. Christensen with it in the corner. They give it to Fair. Fair kicks the attack, top of the key to Olsen. Olsen's going to drive. Now they're going to dish it off in the corner, and the jump shot on the way, and rattles out on the miss by Aaron Bennett. And the Bulldogs control. They lead it 4-0. Four, four 5.56 left to go in the first quarter, and Darian Ringo brings it across midcourt for Brownsburg. Ringo right inside to Lucas for the alley-oop, and he could not control it. Ball does not go out of bounds, and here come the Shamrocks the other way. In the far corner, a three on the way. Rattles out, and the rebound goes to Thompson, who falls to the ground, but he gets the ball back over to Ringo, and Ringo will bring it down for the Bulldogs. 5.28 left to go, 4-0 Brownsburg. Boy, so far with Kyle Thompson and uh, K.J. Walton, Brownsburg with a good height advantage over these Shamrocks here. Thompson outside the arc, controls, gets the ball to Walton, almost stolen by Christensen. He can't come up to it. Lucas controls outside the arc. Goes to Tyler Houston, and Tyler Tyler. Houston, a three on the way. Rattles out. It was a nice soft shot, too. Could not get it to fall, and here come the Shamrocks. Another three on the way by Westfield. He hit it. 
Ian Christensen with the three from the near corner. And the Shamrocks press out of the made basket. Bring it. Oh, they left the back door open. And in goes Ringo, and he missed it. Shot might have been partially blocked by Westfield on the drive to the basket by Darren Ringo. He saw a lane, and his quickness took it, but couldn't convert. I agree with you, Chris. I think it was tipped as it left his hands. Lucas reaches in on a nice defensive play. He's going to get called for the reach-in foul, though. Foul on number three, Trevor Lucas. That's his first and the first team foul. Brownsburg 0 with two from three-point range. Jordash Mavunga and Dalton Vachon will check in soon here for the Bulldogs. County action. Danville's girls team has defeated Frankfurt 75-36. As the first free throw bounces off the back of the rim and misses. 4.34 left to go in the first. The Bulldogs lead at 4-0. Nick Ferrer, I think he was their football quarterback, and a, and a good one he was. Got the size for it. At the line here for Westfield. Darren Ringo going to sit down uh, for Brownsburg. Bit of a Second surprise. free throw misses off the front of the rim. So Dalton Vachon has checked in, as has Jordash Mavunga. So Houston is out, as is Kyle Thompson, and Ringo went to the sideline for a minute, and now he's getting ready to check back in. Trevor Lucas, a jump shot from the free throw line, and he hits it. So 6-3 at the 4-14 mark. Good shot curled to the top of the key there and then got into the free throw line, hit an open jumper, a good shot by Trevor. Brownsburg is definitely a lot better when uh, Trevor Lucas is shooting with some confidence. Foul. They're going to call an offensive foul on Westfield. A foul will be on, I don't know. Yeah, there it is, that. number 10. They're going to okay. call it on Jonah Welch for the block. <clears throat> Brownsburg controls. Ringo brings it across midcourt. Dalton Vachon calling for the ball in the middle. He's going to set a screen, and Ringo's going to drive to the hoop. Can't finish at the basket. It's kind of been a problem all year for this team offensively. That, that semi-contested drive to the basket. Yeah. Uh, had some trouble getting the, getting those shots to fall. That was a big factor in the Hamilton Southeastern uh, game, Troy. You know that uh, KJ Walton missed so many uh, shots right around the right around the goal, trying to finish, as you said. The ball goes out of bounds off Brownsburg, so Westfield controls, and here come the Shamrocks, driving to the hoop, pulling up and trying to lay it up and in. Is Bennett? Bennett can't get it to fall, and the ball goes out of bounds. No, they're going to call foul. You know, Westfield has those uniforms, Troy, and I know this drives us crazy both in football and basketball with dark numbers on our dark jersey. Makes it hard to pick up for us. I will say they're very hard. They would, could really do us a favor and put names on the jerseys yeah. in high school. That would be, it's probably not economical, but it would definitely benefit us. Where well, they're continuing to press full court, Westfield is. I think Brownsburg has a quickness edge, so should be able to get by this press. Ringo inbounds the ball to Lucas, gives it right back to Ringo. Ringo's going to try and press up the court. Now he pulls up at the... Bulldog head at center court. Looking in, he's getting into Vashon. Vashon near the top of the key to Mavunga. Now they get into K.J. Walton. Makes a nice spin move. Goes to the hoop. He is fouled, and the basket will count. K.J. Walton with six points here in the first quarter, and that was a beautiful move. Spun to the hoop on the, along the baseline, put it up and in, and got the foul. It's 8-3, to three, Brownsburg, 3.23 left, first quarter. Walton with a nice fake to his right, spun to the left on the baseline. There was nobody between him and the basket. The Westfield defender trying to make up some lost ground reaches in on the f- and commits the foul. The basket falls. And at 3.23 left to go as the free throw goes down in the first quarter, the Bulldogs lead at 9-3. Get the ball down court quickly. Shamrock's controlling on there into the court. They get the ball top of the key to Christensen. Christensen looking. He's going to drive to his right. Free throw line. Dumps it off top of the key to number 24, Devin Reese, who's checked in the game. Now they go right back into Reese, and Reese misses the jump the jump shot from about two feet. A rebound grabbed and controlled by Sawyer Olson, who finger rolls it over the front of the rim for a basket. And it's 9-5 to five at the 249 mark left in the first quarter. The Bulldogs lead. Almost a turnover there as they get it to Lucas. Lucas controls outside the arc, back over to Ringo on the near side. Brownsburg being very, very patient on offense. Mavunga controls outside the arc. Goes to Lucas outside the arc on the far side. Trevor Lucas with a ball fake. Goes baseline. Gets it back out to Ringo. 
from the baseline. Mavunga controls. He's going to drive in and no foul called as he gets knocked to the floor. Now he steals the ball. And controlling it is Westfield. They're going to try and break. It's tapped away again. And Reese with the baseline jump shot. It is rattles out. That ball went halfway down the cylinder. Rattles out as Comer looks like he's set to check in for the Bulldogs. A tough break there for Westfield. Reese got a good look at the basket. Close in from about four feet. Just went way down in and out. Under two minutes in the first quarter. Nine to five, Brownsburg. K.J. Walton trying to drive the shot. Yeah, they're going to know they're going to call it on the floor. You're right. They are not going to count that basket on that uh, very athletic uh, off-balance shot by K.J. Did get up and in, but they say he was fouled on the floor first. K.J. Walton was fouled on that baseline drive, as Chris said. Fouled on the floor. He continued the play. Hoosier Crossroads Conference play. McCutcheon actually leads Fishers 21-18 at the end of the first quarter up in Fishers. That's a home game for the Tigers. The McCutcheon team's tough. K.J. Walton gets it back out to Trevor Lucas near midcourt. Ringo controls now on the near side. Dribbling back up to midcourt is Ringo. Ringo to Lucas. Lucas thinks about a three, passes it up, and the Bulldogs go back to Ringo near midcourt. They're going to reset. That back door has been open almost the entire first quarter for the Bulldogs. K.J. Walton, there's a three from the top of the key. A little too hard. Comer cannot come up with a rebound, and Sawyer Olsen controls it for the Shamrocks. Jump shot quickly in transition on the other side, misses. And the rebound goes to Vashon. Vashon gets it off to Ringo, and here come the Bulldogs the other way. Ringo driving a wide open lane. He can't finish at the rim again. K.J. Walton with the rebound. Won't go. Rebound again. Won't go, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Poor Ringo. He's getting good penetration. He's getting good looks at the basket. Just rattling off the rim and no good, and Walton will go back to the free throw line. A lot of unfinished business at the rim yeah. for the Bulldogs here in the first quarter. They lead it 9-5, to 102 left to go. K.J. Walton to the line. He'll be shooting two. Coach uh, making some substitutions just one at a time or two at a time here throughout this first quarter. Jordash Mavungal check in for Trevor Lucas. as the first field goal from Walton is good. First free throw. 10-5, 102 left to go in the first quarter. The Bulldogs lead. KJ has eight of the Bulldogs' ten points so far. So it's Vashon, Comer, Ringo, KJ, Walton, and Mavunga. Second free throw is good. And uh, let's see if we're going to call timeout here. No. There's a whistle after the basket. All right. 102 left to go. 11 to 5 as the free throw falls for Walton. The Bulldogs lead it. We're under a minute in the first quarter. We may finish this first quarter without a break in the action, Troy. Top of the key controlled by Matt Kenny. Kenny looks to drive. He dumps it off to number 20, Connor Oswald. Oswald back top of the key to Christensen. Christensen goes back over to Oswald. Oswald can't get it to fall as it rims out. The rebound goes to Mavunga. Here come the Bulldogs the other way. They lead it by six. We're under 30 seconds. Run in the first clock. quarter. I think they'll hold the ball and try and get the last shot of the first quarter here as they go to their poor high offense, Troy. Tyler Houston with the ball to Mavunga outside the arc. Ringo trying to go baseline again, puts it between his legs, resets back over to Houston. Nice ball movement by the Bulldogs. Mavunga controls outside the arc. Ten seconds. Goes top of the key. Ringo with seven seconds. <laughs> Dribble penetration probably coming here, and there's a foul. It's going to be on the floor. It'll be the Bulldogs' ball out of bounds. It'll be under the basket. Where the Westfield player there, Cam Shaw, could not handle uh, Ringo's quickness there as he got by him and committed the foul. So 3.3 seconds left to go in the first quarter. The Bulldogs are going to call timeout. They lead it 11-5. to We want to thank our friends, our friends at Brownsburg McDonald's. Two convenient locations in Brownsburg. One just off 267 and 74. The other off Main Street next to Marsh. Don't forget... McDonald's is the host of the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show. Your chance to get the latest updates on Avon and Brownsburg basketball with interviews of players and coaches. The show airs every Friday night at 6 p.m. on xrbradio.com and is available via podcast at audiosportsonline.com. Thank you, McDonald's, for your support of Brownsburg basketball. 5.46 left to go in the second quarter. The Pacers trail Portland by 5, 37-32 from Bankers Live Fieldhouse. That's a... Home game on ESPN tonight for the Pacers. Uh, 
listening in to the Dan Dockett show today, Chris, on uh, yeah. 1070 The Fan. Mike Tirico was in the oh, studio yeah. with him for about a half hour today. Really good sports radio. Houston on the inbound for three. Oh. It's short. Rebound goes to Lucas. He looked like he was fouled. There's sure no did. call on the play as he's knocked down. The shot does not go. And at the end of the first quarter, the Bulldogs lead this game 11-5. to Really nice uh, defensive effort, especially uh, for the struggling Shamrocks. Again, they come in here with 10 straight losses and 12 losses on the season. A six-point lead at the end of the first for the Bulldogs. Running a little short on cash or got some collectible items around the house you don't need or want? Well, take them to Hendricks County Estate Buyers in Brownsburg. They buy gold, silver, coins, tools, electronics, and antiques. They specialize in one piece or entire collections. If you have an estate or household liquidation, call them first. Ask for Justin at 317-286-3652, seven days a week. They're on the corner of Maine and Odell in Brownsburg. That's the Hendricks County Estate Buyers. Well, I thank everybody for joining us uh, for this Hoosier Crossroads Conference contest between the Bulldogs of Brownsburg High School and the Westfield Shamrocks. End of the first quarter, 11-5, a six-point lead for the Bulldogs. K.J. Walton, the leading scorer for Brownsburg. And, uh, again, the Bulldogs, number five team in the state, coming into this contest with a 12-2 record. There are only two losses this season are to the Carmel Greyhounds, who are now the number one team in the state, and the Hamilton Southeastern Royals, who find themselves as number two in the polls. Couldn't be more impressed with that Hamilton Southeastern squad. Of course, we saw Carmel, too, but that was their first game of the year. I got a question. Do they call it a huddle in basketball? Is that the correct name? That is correct. That's our producer as uh, Darren Ringo on the fast break on the feed from Lucas on the other side lays it up. It's a 13-5 lead for the Bulldogs. Our uh, producer, Rob Kendall, is looking uh, to, to post something on Twitter, and I don't think he had the description for the picture. So, indeed, the uh, basketball grouping at the bench is a huddle, yeah, just I like it they, is in they football. huddle up. Yeah. yeah. There's a turnover. Uh-oh. Ringo had to Lucas on the other end. He lays it in. And that's going to call cause Westfield to call a timeout. 15-5, to five, a 10-point lead, 7.22 left to go in the second quarter for the Bulldogs. A new Ivy Tech Community College campus has opened in Crawfordsville. The campus is easily accessible off I-74 at the Crawfordsville exit. Registration for summer and fall classes is ongoing. The new campus has science labs, computer labs, and a complete associate degree in business. You can meet with admissions and financial aid advisors. Take an assessment and register for classes on site. Ivy Tech is located at 2325 Phil Ward Boulevard inside the Crawfordsville Commerce Park. Go to ivytech.edu or call 888-IV-LINE. That's I-V-Y-LINE for more information. Ivy Tech is changing lives. We mentioned uh, two losses for the uh, Bulldogs to Carmel and uh, Hamilton Southeastern. Carmel, number one team in the state, is at Lawrence North tonight. That game's getting ready to tip off. Keep you updated on scores from there as that would have poll and conference implications for the Bulldogs. Westfield controls. They, they trail by 10, 7-11 left to go in the second quarter. Top of the key is Nick Fur. Fair gets the ball off to uh, Matt Kenny. Kenny the steal. Lucas the other way, and he dunks it. Trevor Lucas with the steal. Drives down the other end of the court, gets some air. That's interesting. In the Noblesville game, he tried to dunk like that and missed it. So, And the bench was surprised he tried one. I know he wanted to get one back. Good job, Trevor. 6.48 left to go, 17-5. to five. Brownsburg leads. They get the ball inside to Nick Fair. Fair dribbles it back out outside the arc for Westfield. Hands it off to Bennett. Bennett. Over to Spencer to Tebby. Cross-court pass. Cam Shaw. Shaw back top of the key to Tebby. Tebby trying to get it inside. A three on the way. It's blocked. And that'll make a fast break for the Bulldogs. Coming the other way and a bad pass, but Lucas comes up with it. Gets the ball back to Ringo, and the Bulldogs will control outside the arc. Early in this game, pretty obvious. The Bulldogs just too quick and athletic for Westfield right now. K.J. Walton looks to drive. Gets it back out to Tyler Houston outside the arc. Houston, Kyle Thompson's back in the game now. He controls outside, gives it off to Ringo. Ringo knocks it around a little bit. He'll have to pass it to Lucas. Lucas looks to drive and fakes the three. Gives the ball back to Ringo. Good patient work here by the Bulldogs. That's what they want to do. Got off to a good lead. They want to get enough touches here on each possession. Ringo and K.J. Walton playing catch outside the arc. 
trying to get it inside to Houston on the cut, and they can't. And the ball, that's a turnover, and Westfield controls coming the other way. Bennett will bring the ball down for the Shamrocks. Gets the ball off to Ferrer. Ferrer back top of the court to Tebby. Tebby gets the ball back into Fair. Fair looking to post up, cannot. Bennett controls top of the key. Tebby now with Lucas on him. Looks to drive. Top of the key controlled by Nick Fair. Westfield having trouble finding an open spot against this tough man-to-man defense. Everybody's paying, playing catch for the Shamrocks. Calling for the ball inside there was Kenny. No pass. Top of the key now, Nick Ferrer with controls the ball. Gives it off to Tebby. Trying to get it inside. Another turnover for the Shamrocks. The Bulldogs control, and they'll hold it up. Kyle Thompson deflected that pass. Ringo picked up the loose ball. Brownsburg ball here. 4.44 left in the first half. Brownsburg leads 17-5. Ringo brings it across midcourt. Feeds it into Thompson. Thompson with some post play. Misses the jumper. Turnaround jump shot from about six feet. Bounces off the front of the rim. The Shamrocks control the other way. They trail 17 to 5. 428 left to go. Nice pass inside there to number 50, Matt Kinney. And the basket is good. And Westfield will press out of the made basket. Picking up at midcourt now. Backing off on the press. Matt Kinney picking up Ringo. Ringo gives it off to K.J. Walton. Lucas now outside the arc. Ringo controls on the near side. Fakes a three. Now he's going to drive baseline. Gets the ball out to Lucas in transition on the other side. The three on the way. Bounces off and missed it. That ball took a uh, nice bounce off the front of the rim and came back down but wouldn't fall. And here come the Shamrocks the other way. Driving to the basket and fouled is number 22, Spencer Tebby. He's a 5'11 junior, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. I think that foul was on Trevor Lucas, his second that was good. Uh, Mr. Trevi showed some uh, quickness there for Westfield. Got to the hoop ahead of Trevor, and Trevor reached out and fouled him. And he'll shoot. Uh, the Westfield player will shoot free throws. Now. I feel like I want someone to call me and tell me I'm pronouncing his name right. Because I'm Let's not sure that I am. T E B B E. I'd go with Tebby. All right. There we go. On it. Dalton Deshaun, Jordash McGavunga check in. Kyle Thompson out, along with baseball player Tyler Houston. And we're ready for. Brownsburg baseball. You know, we got to talk to Coach Mattingly here in the past week on the McDonald's show, and uh, we talked about we had some rough weather last baseball season. You know that. So yes, we did. Ready for good weather and baseball this year. There were some times we almost froze to death there yeah. in baseball season last year. And then had the, uh, the, the well, we had rain. both extremes during football season as well. The second free throw misses. It's a 10-point lead for the Bulldogs. 3.41 left to go here in the second quarter. The Bulldogs control as Ringo brings it across midcourt. Puts it between his legs. K.J. Walton on, for KJ. a three. Hit it. Nice shot. Nice soft touch from the far side in the corner by K.J. Walton. Nick Walton has 12 points here in the first half. Steal by Brownsburg. Those are his 10th, 11th, and 12 points ahead. Full court pass to Mavunga. Gives it up to Lucas. Lucas bounces it on, inside Dalton. to Vashon. And Dalton Vashon with the layup on the break. 25-7. Brownsburg way in control. Unselfish play there by Brownsburg between uh, Mavunga and Lucas giving the ball up. And Mr. Vashon found himself wide open under the basket, and he was able to put it back in. A good score for Dalton. Westfield controls. They try and get it inside to Devin Reese, and Reese with the kick. Foul Mavunga. Foul will go on number four, Jordash Mavunga, as Chris said. Checking into the game now is number 14, Tyler Kurtz. He's a GIA sophomore. Very unusual for him to play in the first half. So this is a good chance for Brownsburg to, to use a lot of their lineup, and I think we'll see that as this game goes on, Troy. That was Mavunga's second foul. Bennett controls, top of the key, dribbling outside, gives it off to Tebby. Tebby back to Bennett. Bennett trying to get it inside to Devin Reese. Reese now controls. He's going to try and do a little bit of post play there. He cannot. They go back out to Tebby. Tebby drives. Up to the free throw line, he almost a turnover as the ball was kicked by Darian Ringo, and Ringo was gone for a fast break otherwise. He wanted to take off. You know, that's a trait we've seen him do over and over. Ever since that big uh, breakout layup against the Ben Davis team, is Darian Ringo is constantly looking to break and take off for the other end to get a uh, open layup. Sam Comer checks in for the Bulldogs. Oh. Almost a steal by Vashawn. Tebby will control it, give it back off to Bennett. Bennett gets the ball inside. Now they kick it out 
for a three from the far side. It's misses badly. Reese with a nice rebound. Nice athletic move there, and he misses the putback. Here come the Bulldogs the other way. Nice pass in transition, and the ball is blocked by Reese. And the Shamrocks control the other way. A three on the way by Tebby. Bounces off and missed. And that's going to go out of bounds off of uh, K.J. Walton. It'll remain with the Shamrocks. Tyler Kurtz on the fast break got a really nice pass in transition. Went up to the basket and had his shot blocked. He did go down to the floor, no foul called. It would have been nice to see Tyler Kurtz score there. He plays a lot of JV for Brownsburg, so good to get him in the first half here. Works hard in practice. I wish he would have got that bucket. Wells trying to inbound the ball, and he does. Therese trying to set a, peck, uh, set a pick up top for Christensen. Gets the ball over to uh, Sawyer Olson, who misses the jump shot, gets his own rebound. Top of the key for Bennett. A three, rattles out, and knocked out of bounds. And they call a foul. They did. I think a foul is going to be. I think it's on Westfield. It is. It's going to be on number 10, Jonah Welch, the guard. He's a freshman. That is his third. So a good 22-7 lead here for Brownsburg as Darian Ringo will shoot foul shots. We'll get you his stats here in a second. Ringo, a 63% foul shooter coming into this game, so he'd like to improve that here. Ringo dribbles, stares at the line. First free throw is up and good. Rattled around just a bit. Ringo, all three of his points here in the second quarter. 156 left to go in the second quarter, 23-7. to seven. The Bulldogs lead Westfield. Ringo, second shot on the way, and he hit it. 24-7 to seven now. That's four points for Ringo in the first half. Oswald now brings the ball down for Westfield. Just substitutions in mass. A three on the way, bounces out. The rebound goes to Bennett. Bennett gets the ball top of the key to Christensen. Christensen looking to drive. He's got Walton on him. He dishes it back out to Bennett outside the arc on the near side. Bennett trying to make something happen. Has to give it up inside to Christensen. Christensen gets the ball to Devin Reese, and Reese is fouled on the jump shot. It almost looks like early on here that uh, Devin Reese is uh, maybe the best bet offensively, especially interior for the Shamrocks. Yeah, he's trying to operate down low there. Kyle Thompson, coach, got a little upset with Kyle there because he initially had good defensive position on him, but uh, kind of swung open the gate and Reese swung to the basket and got a good look at the basket and a good shot, just missed it. First shot by Reese rattles out. 125 left to go in the first quarter, 24 to 7. Bulldogs lead. Devin Reese is 0 for 4, though, from the field, so let's see if he can get a free throw to drop here. Sawyer Olsen checks into the game. They have been stuck on seven. Or checks points. out of the game, I'm sorry, for the Westfield. Second free throw is good. They're off that seven. 24 to eight now. 120 left to go in the first quarter. The Bulldogs lead it. They control. Ringo will bring it across midcourt. See how much time they can run off here. Kyle Thompson barking out of the set for the Brownsburg offense. Kurtz controls, gets it to Thompson, and now Kurtz and Ringo play a little catch outside the arc. Lynch running a play here. He wants that spread. KJ, KJ Walton looking for that high ball screen to let Ringo loose. They can't get it. Kurtz will control it outside the arc on the far side. Back to Ringo at the at center court. Ringo calling out a play. Everybody kind of standing still on offense and defense. Ringo looking for some dribble penetration. Can't get it. He goes to Kurtz on the baseline. Attaway. Kurtz with a nice take oh. to the basket. And oh. They're going to call a charge. Mike Kinney for Westfield stood firm on the baseline there as he did. Kurtz tried to drive. So the foul will go against Tyler Kurtz. That's his second. Tyler with a nice aggressive move to the basket. I know Coach wants to see him do more than that. Uh, in practice, he will settle for an outside jumper instead of drive to the basket. But, boy, he looked good on that drive. They called him for the offensive foul. Aaron Bennett brings the ball down for the Shamrocks. Bennett gets it off to... Matt Kinney. Kinney's going to drive. He's going to kick it off to Reese. Reese, top of the key to Connor Oswald. Oswald looks to drive. He had an open lane, didn't take it, gives the ball back to Bennett. And Westfield's going to play for the last shot. Brownsburg continue aggressive man-to-man. Really hassling Bennett with that defense. The alley-oop to Reese, and he got it. 
Nice pass there by the undersized Bennett to get the ball to Devin Reese. A three on the way off the side of the backboard. And at the end of the first half, our scores, Brownsburg 24 and Westfield 10. A nice offensive and defensive effort. Really a good half of basketball for the Bulldogs. Uh, the only thing I could really, only thing you could really point out is leaving some of those, uh, leaving some of those points on the baseline at the rim. Yeah. Uh, after some nice, but some nice aggressive moves to the basket, and it's a 14-point lead at halftime for Brownsburg. Westfield shot a poor percentage. Uh, they only had five points in both the first and second quarter. Brownsburg with 11 points in the first, 13 points in the second. They lead here at halftime, 24 to 10. Did you know Nelson Jewelers in Brownsburg has been serving Hendricks County and the west side of Indianapolis with an extensive selection of finer diamonds and gemstones since 1958? Nelson Jewelers is a family-owned jewelry store specializing in unique jewelry, jewelry repair, appraisals, and watch repair. Nelson Jewelers is conveniently located downtown Brownsburg across from the Hendricks County Bank. Visit Nelson Jewelers for all of your jewelry needs at 22 East Main Street and online at nelsonjewelers.com. Nelson Jewelers, a little out of, the way, out of the way, very much out of the ordinary. Panuni's Pizza and Wings in Brownsburg has something for everybody. Pizza with more toppings than you can count, including specialty pizzas, five different kinds of calzones, breadsticks, and cheese bread with two kinds of dipping sauce. All made in-house with Panuni's own hand-tossed dough. And don't forget Panuni's Jumbo Wings with 12 kinds of sauce. Mention the XRB special and get 10% off of your order. They're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday, open until 11 p.m. Dine in, carry out our free delivery. Call 286-3500. That's Panuni's Pizza and Wings at 1447 East Main in Brownsburg. A couple of scores to pass on to you again. McCutcheon leads Fishers 21 to 18 at the end of the first quarter. Avon leads Lafayette Jeff 11 to 8 at the end of one. Noblesville 22 and uh, Harrison 9 at the end of the first quarter. That Carmel Lawrence North game, the, the uh, Hounds lead at Lawrence North 15 to 8 at the end of the first quarter. Greenwood leads uh, uh, county uh, opponent uh, Plainfield 11 to 7 into the first quarter. And an update on that Avon Jeff score: they are tied 26 apiece at halftime. Here we are from uh, here at Varsity Fieldhouse. It's a 14 point lead for the Bulldogs at halftime. They lead 24 to 10 at the end of the first half. And uh, K.J. Walton, the leading scorer for the Bulldogs. And uh, uh, Chris is going to have a special guest for us uh, here tonight, a little uh, halftime interview with a, uh, one of the leaders of the very active and important student section here um, at Brownsburg. And uh, very few things are more important to a team when they're at home than the fans, Chris. And I think yeah. it's really, really impressive, uh, not only in basketball, but in football and even in baseball we see it. Uh, how active the student body and the fans are here for the Bulldogs. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chris. Chris. Thank you, Troy. Okay, my guest here at halftime with Brownsburg leading 24 to 10. Uh, we're going to have a fun interview with, for you folks. I think somebody a little different for you. Brownsburg student, very active here as far as leading the Brownsburg uh, student section, Mr. Austin Jones. Austin, what year in school are you now? I'm a senior. And they call you Jonesy, right? Yes, sir. Good. And you're also a Brownsburg baseball player. That is right. Now, Troy and I, we do the baseball games, too, and we were just talking, well, we're ready for some good weather and get the Brownsburg baseball started. I bet you are, too. Yeah, I'm ready. The snow uh, it's put a damper on us, and we're just uh, hoping we get some warm weather and get outside, and we're just ready to, we're ready to go. You've done a great job of helping this, and I know the students really appreciate it. What I like about you is, you don't just do it at home with the other students here. You take that big show on the road. Tell us about helping them team out on the road. Oh, uh, well, uh, we thought about it, and we said uh, bringing in a new coach, it's more than just helping out the players. we got to give him a fine energy and uh, let him know that we're behind him when he comes in here. It's a new atmosphere, and he's not really used to it. So we wanted to give him a good welcome and give him a good uh, – student section at every game that's great well, you're sure doing that and i'll tell you anybody who made that mccutcheon trip in that weather that was rough for all of us there you guys were tell us and i think that was the debut of the uh the coach lynch t-shirts yeah um we got a picture from the ad kelly wagner and we took it over to embroider me and avon you can get your shirt over there for 10 bucks and we just decided hey why not throw a picture of him say we love lynch show our support for him since we love him so much so 
That's great, Austin. And of course, the uh, picture, it's a big picture on the front of the T-shirts. Then what's it say on the back? Uh, it says, we love Lynch. There you go. And they got, to, he, Austin's got five or six of the guys wearing that. Uh, you know, and uh, tonight, of course, uh, tell us about, you had a special escort for the coach tonight. Now, what happened there? It looked like some secret agents. You had the glasses on, the jackets. Looked great. Gave him an escort to the bench. Tell us about that. Well, we uh, we got to keep our uh, main man safe, get yeah. him to the floor safe. So we decided to dress up in our suits, get him there safe, and uh, <laughs> just give him a good special escort. That's terrific, Jonesy. Uh, and, you know, I want you to know, and I think you do, I've talked to some of the players about it. They appreciate the way you guys uh, really support them, especially on those road games, you know. You see the parents there, of course. Uh, I'm usually there, but then you guys, and, and that really helps them out right behind the bench there. So good job, uh, Jonesy. We appreciate your support. Let's go uh, Brownsburg baseball, right? Hey, let's go. Okay, you're in your senior season. What are you going to do next year? Uh, I got a few options right now. I'm not really decided 100% where I'm going, but hopefully I can make a decision by uh, spring. Okay, well, you're a terrific kid, and again, thanks for supporting uh, Brownsburg basketball. Good luck in baseball season. We'll All talk right. to you then, Jonesy. All right, thank you for having me. Okay. Westside Plumbing, when pl plumbing problems arise, do you want a plumbing company with an impressive truck or fancy jingles? Of course not. You want your problem solved quickly and at an affordable price. At Westside Plumbing, we understand you want a plumber who is honest, respectful, and knows how to fix the problem. Westside Plumbing provides fast, professional plumbing service seven days a week. When you invite Westside Plumbing into your home, be assured they'll be knowledgeable, timely, and will give your home the respect it deserves. Honesty, integrity, and respect, that's what you get when you call Westside Plumbing at 445-8399. That's 445-8399, Westside Plumbing. Serving Brownsburg and all of Hendricks County. You are doing a heck of a job, Chris. Thank you, Rob. You know, Jonesy, I love that kid. He, he, he's little, I see you be doing some of that you know, in, in high school, but he is really tremendous at uh, cheering the Brownsburg teams home and away. That's yeah, what I like. You know, the back in show. high school, I was actually so intense that, that they banned me from the stadium. <laughs> I'll bet, Rob. I'll bet they did. Wiley Palooza, you know, 2014, uh, we just got past January, but Wiley Palooza is still excited about serving the community of Brownsburg with their delicious hand-dipped award-winning premium ice cream all year. They also want to let you know about an exciting contest they're having where they'll make a special Sunday creation that you design. Pick one of their premium ice cream flavors like Kitty Kitty Bang Bang, Yippee Skippy, or Fat Elvis, or a traditional flavor like Butter Pecan, Vanilla Bean, or Cookie Dough, or any of the 20 flavors with amazing toppings. Then post your recipe ingredients on their Facebook page at Wiley Palooza Ice Cream Emporium, Brownsburg. The post with the most likes from their scoopers will get their creation on the menu, plus a gift certificate for two free Sundays. Uh, and they'll even name the Sunday after the winter for the month of February, which I'm sure they've already done. Wiley Palooza in the Brownsburg Shopping Plaza on Highway 36. Now, you know, the, while you were reading those ads from our fine sponsors there, Chris, we had a... Uh... A game of knockout going on over here. Oh, okay. And it was uh, has to do with the you know they're out raising some money for charity tonight. Yeah. And our good friends at McDonald's who sponsor uh, th these basketball games amongst others actually donated free uh, value meal coupons oh. to all the uh, participants. Terrific. So uh, special thanks to Carrie and all the people at McDonald's for uh, for helping out with that. That was uh, real nice of them to uh, to be a part of the halftime entertainment here tonight. Yeah. You know McDonald's and they sponsor the Hendricks County Sports show the coaches show they do a good job of supporting high school sports here in the area now be honest chris uh, i know you have a day job but you're probably uh every day when you wake up you're probably actively considering giving that up to be a, a sports broadcaster now well I, i'd love to but I, I kind of follow your fine example of that you know you're busy too but you make time for a lot of high school sports and i know it's part of your business but uh I, I love this uh, the Brownsburg High School and their sporting community. Their athletic director, Kelly Wagoner, always takes good care of us. You know that. Uh, Coach Lynch here has been fantastic as far as giving us some interviews and some uh, special access here. So this is a great place to be. Our friends down at Avon, uh, too. So we love it. Well, and I just want to uh, want to let our audience know because uh, I share this with you all the time. You know, sometimes I just say if I could be anybody, it'd be Chris Worley. <laughs> and with you, that, I'll, I'll turn it back to Troy Weimer. <laughs> You know what is a good neighbor? It's someone nearby who helps make your life a little easier. It's State Farm Agent Pete Fay. He takes the time to understand your insurance and financial needs. So whether you're preparing for your child's college education or planning for your retirement, get the kind of help you'd expect from a good neighbor. Visit State Farm Agent Pete Fay at 431 East Northfield Suite 100 in Brownsburg. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
course, tonight's game is on XRB Radio, WXRB, 1610 AM. Also, we want to thank uh, Shane Ray, our good friend, does a lot for the community here, and XRB Radio broadcasting both the games, both tonight and tomorrow night against Tri-West. Troy? I'm excited about it, Chris. You get to work yeah. with you two nights in a row. Yeah, that's great. I mean, if I can pick someone to spend my weekend with, right? I, I don't know about that, Troy, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, IU plays tomorrow or Sunday? Yeah, they're going to interfere with our broadcast tomorrow. It's an 8:15 tip from uh, Minneapolis at oh, the barn. Okay. A very important game for both of those teams with the Hoosiers. I mean, i got to tell you, yeah. even on Sports Talk Radio today, they're going to talk about them, a, a tournament bubble team, and I, I haven't really seen that. But we'll see as a Hoosier fan. Of course, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not shy about my bias when it comes to college basketball there. No, we hope that they are. Some scores from around sports. Uh, for you here at halftime, it's 24 to 10. The Bulldogs lead the Westfield Shamrocks. Uh, about uh, we're about three minutes away from the tip of the third quarter. 50 to 45, the Pacers do trail the uh, Portland Trailblazers at halftime from Bankers Life Fieldhouse downtown. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves are at the Pelicans tonight. The Nuggets lead the Knicks 33 to 24 at Madison Square Garden. Chris is one of Chris's favorite sports, the NHL. The Rangers and Penguins are tied in the second quarter, 9.43 left to go. It's kind of early in that when they're tied at 2-2 two two from Pittsburgh. Thank you. And uh, the Chicago Blackhawks and the uh, uh, Phoenix Coyotes are uh, sit. Uh, that game, I'm sorry, that game, the puck doesn't drop until 9 o'clock there. And I thought I had heard, I saw that, are the Coyotes changed the name to the Arizona Coyotes? I don't know about that. I haven't heard that. No, they've had some ownership uh, I believe problems they are. With, with some money and finances, they so they may be. Maybe they can sell out for some taxpayer money. Yeah, exactly. Arizona, they can be state sponsored. And as that. we mentioned, the Hoosiers are at Minnesota tomorrow night. That's an 815, 8-15 tip from the barn on campus there in Minneapolis. Minnesota kind of up and down, too. You know, they look great early in the season, but they struggled. So I like uh, in the Big Ten that Michigan State team and uh, Michigan, those two uh, really tough. Ohio State, after a terrible stretch, has now come on and won a few games. So Big Ten, uh, exciting action again, and it's going to take place again tomorrow. A lot of big games tomorrow, but we hope you'll join us here or come out to the Fieldhouse tomorrow night for a county game. I imagine Tri-West will bring a few people over from uh, just west of here for that game tomorrow night, and I think tip time is 7.30 for varsity basketball here from Varsity Fieldhouse, Brownsburg, Indiana. I'm not going to say the weather will be nice, but I'll say the weather will be presentable as we're not expecting some uh, uh, large measurable snowstorm, as has been uh, the uh, the case many times. A couple of scores, uh, Southmont leads that Tri-West team 15-14 to 14 at the end of the first quarter, and in that Carmel-Lawrence North contest, Carmel leads 26 to 16, a 10 point lead at halftime, and just in uh, McCutcheon leads Fishers 48 to 35. The Tigers are trailing McCutcheon at the half. I'd like to thank Brian Scott from back in his home studio for pushing all the scores our way tonight here at halftime. Yep, give you some scoring here in the first half. Trevor Lucas for Brownsburg has six points. Darren Ringo with just four, played good defense though. Uh, KJ Walton, the leading scorer with 12 points. Dalton Deshaun has two points, and that's the only scoring for Brownsburg, and they're 24 points. Westfield has just 10 points here at halftime. Devin Reese with uh, three points. Mr. Christensen with uh, three points also. Matt Kinney with two, and they have one more score in Sawyer Olson with two, so just 10 points. I think it was pretty clear. Brownsburg's uh, athleticism, speed, strength, height, just a little too much for the Westfield Shamrocks there in the first half, but we're not going to feel bad about it. Westfield put a good whooping on the Brownsburg uh, football team here. So Brownsburg, as the players said yesterday, Kyle Thompson said they need to keep their foot on the accelerator here, finish the deal, and then we'll see about tomorrow night. Well, 24-10, to 10, it's a 14-point uh, lead for Brownsburg. Eight minutes are on the clock, and we're getting ready to start the third quarter as Brownsburg will throw the ball in from the far baseline. The Bulldogs will be going from left to right. They're in their white jerseys with the purple letters, the Shamrocks in their green jerseys with the unfortunate dark numbers in black that you can barely see outlined in gold with the green shorts with the gold trim as well. Shamrock mascot did make it tonight. Not been too active. He's not. Haven't seen a lot of the rock (laughs) jumping around. Alley-oop! And a huge dunk by K.J. Walton on the alley-oop from Ringo. Those guys called that play at the half. That was absolutely fabulous. And on the other end, everybody got a little excited and uh, 
shut down their defensive effort. The net pass into Devin Reese on the baseline for the layup, and it's a 26-12 lead. We're all excited about the big dunk. Guess who's mad about the defensive <laughs> letdown at the other end is at, Coach Lynch. He as, turned around. as well he should be. Yeah. You're exactly right. They were excited about that. Slam. That alley oop happened so fast, I almost didn't call it. I, I just yeah. looked up, and the ball was in the air. Lucas now controls, gets the ball back off to Ringo. They go KJ Walton for a three, and it bounces off. The rebound goes to the Shamrocks, and Bennett brings it down for Westfield. Ball's tipped away from behind by Ringo, goes off KJ Walton's hand, and Westfield retains possession. Bennett will inbound from the near baseline right in front of the Westfield bench. Yeah, that's a specialty of Darren Ringo. You get past him on the dribble, he almost lets you by, and then he likes to steal it from behind. That's how they won that big Ben Davis, that last second shot. Steal, uh, almost Tom. old Christensen kept it alive, though. You're, and you're exactly right, Chris. He loves to take that ball from the dribbler from behind. Christensen gets it into Kenny. Kenny back to Christensen. Oh, that's Nick Fair. And the ball's steal. stolen away. Darren Ringo all by himself for the layup on the other end of the court. Seen a lot. Of, we've seen a lot of that tonight by the Bulldogs defensively, turning, them in, turning those steals into points on the fast break. It's 28-12, Brownsburg, 6.30 left to go in the third quarter. Darren conservative there. He could have tried to slam. We've seen him do one, but he laid it up and in, got the bucket. Reese, Reese kicks the ball back outside, a three on the way, and it's good. The three-pointer by Nick Fair outside the arc. His first bucket of the night, he has three points. 28 to 15, 6 10 left to go, third quarter. Pass goes inside and now a turnover, and Fair's got it. Hands it off to Bennett. Oh, and Ringo almost with another steal, and they're going to call a foul. Or are they going to call, what are they going to call, backcourt violation or a foul? Uh, no, I think he kicked the ball. No, they're going to say yeah. it's a kick. Yeah, kicked by Ringo trying to make that steal there, put his foot out, and uh, Dalton Deshaun comes back in for Brownsburg. Benton. Bennett gets the ball into Reese. Bennett controlling now near midcourt. He's guarded by Ringo. And another bounce pass intercepted by Ringo. Gets the ball off to Vashon. Trevor Lucas controls. Turnaround jump shot. Misses Vashon with a rebound. Oh. Taps it up and oh. in. Misses it. And the ball rattles down. And Devin Reese with the rebound. It's stolen away by Ringo on the other end. And he'll hold it up. Now he's got Trevor Lucas on the baseline for the wide open layup. And it's a 15-point lead for the Bulldogs, 30-15, to 5.30 left to go in the third quarter. Brownsburg not letting up on defense. Still an aggressive man-to-man. Trying to get the ball inside. That ball was kicked by Mavunga. He slaps it. It goes out of bounds. The pass was intended for Nick Fair going baseline on the back cut. He can't control it. The ball goes out of bounds. Well, George Ash Mavunga doesn't have any points here tonight. But he's, a, he's fit in well with that role of the sixth man. He's usually the first man off the bench. Been a valuable player for Brownsburg this year, Jordash Mavunga. So it's Mavunga, Vashon, KJ Walton, Ringo, and Lucas for the Bulldogs. Pass goes inbound. It's blocked by Mavunga. And Ringo controls. He'll bring it down for the Bulldogs. Takes it across midcourt, looking to drive. Going to give it up to Mavunga. Going baseline, gets his gets the shot blocked, gets his own rebound. The Bulldogs control. Ringo tries to take, thinks about a three from the, and he's going to take it. And he rolls off the outs of the rim, and the ball is rebounded by Devin Reese of the Shamrocks. I'd like to see a little more ball work, a little patience there, but Ringo was open. He took a good shot. Tebby tries to pass the ball into the corner to Christensen. It's kicked out of bounds by Lucas. The Shamrocks will inbound from the far sideline. Ringo is going to check out. Tyler Houston checks in for the Bulldogs. I don't think Coach Lynch liked that three-pointer from the corner right there. You had to work the ball a little bit. You got a good lead. Trying to get the ball into Reese. They cannot. K.J. Walton ahead to Lucas. Quick and transition off the steal. He's fouled, and it goes. Wow. As Trevor Lucas goes tumbling into the baseline seating, everybody, in, including the fans and Trevor, look to be okay. Great hustle there, as we always see from number three, Trevor Lucas. Absolutely. Such a hard worker. He's got ten points in this game. But we've seen that also from him. He plays so all out all the time that a lot of times he'll go to the rim and get hard fouled. And he's tumbling into the bleachers or, you know, behind the basket somehow. He's banged up a little bit. I know he had a hurt wrist at one point, but he's tough. Trevor at the line. First free throw by Lucas is up, or the deep free throw by Lucas is up and good. 4.41 left to go in the third quarter, 33-15. to 15. A three on the way by the Shamrocks, and he hit it. Ian Christensen from 
outside the arc on the far side, 33-18, to 4.30 left to go. The Bulldogs lead. Christensen, his second three-pointer of the night. Christensen almost got the ball stolen, or almost stole the ball from K.J. Walton. They get it back out to Lucas, top of the key. Tyler Houston and Lucas playing a little catch outside the arc. Westfield went to a zone here. Houston gets into Vashon. Vashon, nice Good bounce pass. pass inside to Mavunga, who lays it up and in. 35-18, to 18, Brownsburg. Four minutes left to go in the third. Assist by Dalton Vashon with a good old bounce pass there, Troy. Don't see enough of those. No. Tebby, top of the key, trying to get it to Reese. Reese now controls. He kicks it out to Christensen. Christensen with another three on the way, and he hit it. Nine points now for Christensen, two Ian, straight threes. Ian Christensen finds his shooting groove at halftime, and that's going to make Steve Lynch... Call a timeout. So at the 345 mark left to go in the third quarter. Timeout Brownsburg. The Bulldogs lead at 35 to 21. You're finally on your own, living in your own place, paying your bills, making your own decisions. When your decisions involve insurance and financial needs, it's nice to have a little help. State Farm Agent Pete Fay knows that being on your own shouldn't feel like being alone. Visit State Farm Agent Pete Fay at 431 East Northfield in Brownsburg. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And you are listening to Brownsburg Varsity Basketball on audiosportsonline.com, WXRB 1610 AM and XRBRadio.com. This broadcast is brought to you by McDonald's, Hendricks County Estate Buyers, Ivy Tech, Nelson Jewelers, Panunis, Pete Fay, your state farm agent, Westside Plumbing, and Wiley Palooza. You know, if uh, this lead holds up, Troy, we may have something fun to look forward to in the fourth quarter, and that's Brownsburg uh, junior Andrew Hubley, if he comes in the game, we all want him to shoot a three-pointer. He's a perfect three out of three from three-point range this season. So Something he, to look forward to in the fourth quarter there. We, we really Chris. want to get him in and get that get that shot up, and I know if he hits that, the whole bench is going to go crazy. Coming into the game, Westfield is coming off a loss at Lebanon, or to Lebanon, 60-44. to Brownsburg defeated Noblesville. A nice, pretty impressive road win, yep. really, to go all the way up to Noblesville, win that game, a nice crowd on hand there yep. for the Millers. 53-41, to 41, they uh, defeat Noblesville on the road. It was. You know, you always know, know Noblesville's going to have good athletes, and, of course, they have good facilities. Uh, and that was a tough, hard-fought contest. Brownsburg really played good in, got that job went, done for another win on the road, 8-0 on the road. And, again, we'll be here tomorrow night for the Tri-West Bruins as they come in for the 7.30 tip against Brownsburg. Come on, Bulldogs get control. The ball goes into Vashon. Vashon puts the ball on the floor, and he is fouled by Tebby, number 22. Foul on the baseline. It's a non-shooting foul. The Bulldogs will inbound on the baseline. That's Tebby's third foul. Ringo inbounds to Houston, top of the key. Houston gives it off to Trevor Lucas. Back to Ringo on the far side. Bashan tries to set the pick. Ringo's going to drive baseline to Mavunga. Mavunga dribbles around, gives it back to Tyler Houston. They go back to Lucas, top of the key. Lucas outside the arc. Ringo on the far side with the ball. Bashan fighting. Ball. He wants the he ball. Wants the ball bad. I was just getting ready to say he's fighting for position. They go cross court pass to Lucas, who dribbles baseline, and a foul as he drives baseline. The blocking foul will go against Westfield. Boy, that's something we've seen over and over again. Brownsburg quickness getting by the Westfield defenders on the dribble. Foul is on number 50, Matt Kinney. That's his first. Inbounds pass. Ringo, Tyler Houston, top of the key, trying to get him to Mavunga. He's guarded. And a foul on the reach in is going to go against Ian Christensen. Looked like Mavunga might have put yeah. his shoulder down there a little bit. He was eligible for the offensive foul. He was not awarded it. Yeah, Mavunga looked like a human wrecking ball down there, <laughs> knocking aside Westfield defenders. But the referee co- did call the foul on Mr. Christensen, his first foul of the night. Ringo will inbound for the Bulldogs. 35-21. And they right into Trevor Lucas who puts it up and in over the front of the rim. 37-21. to 21. Trevor with 12 points now. That was an easy basket 16 on 16-point lead for the Bulldogs. Tebby across midcourt for Westfield. Gives the ball back to Christensen. Christensen looking to drive. Bits the ball. Knocked away by Ringo. And another steal for the Bulldogs. Ahead to Trevor Lucas. And more points in transition as Lucas makes the layup. 39-21. to 21. It's an 18-point lead for the Bulldogs. 2.28 left to go. In the third quarter, Westfield come foul on the It's a non-shooting foul. Yeah, Ringo the foul, Ringo. Ringo does get the foul. That's his first, the first team foul. Ringo has six points on the night. 
Nobody in foul trouble for Brownsburg here tonight. So Comer will check in. Mavunga checks out. So Thompson checks back in. Vashawn checks out. Inbounds pass by Westfield. Goes into Kinney. Kinney gets the ball to Christensen. Back to Tebby. Tebby now controls outside the arc. Looking to drive. Gets the ball to Reese. Reese back out to Tebby in the corner. Three on the way. Missed it. Rebound goes to Trevor Lucas. Lucas gives the ball cross court off to Darian Ringo. Ringo brings it across midcourt. Looking to drive. Feeds it to Lucas in the corner. Trevor Lucas with a three on the way. He hit it. Trevor having a big night. Nice shooting night all the way around, especially from a little bit of distance for the Bulldogs, and they'll have Westfield call a timeout. 17 points for Trevor, and he also leads this team in rebounding. The 156 left to go in the third quarter. The Bulldogs lead it 42-21. to We want to thank our friends at Brownsburg McDonald's. Two convenient locations in Brownsburg, one just off 267 and 74, the other off Main Street next to Marsh. Don't forget, McDonald's is the host of the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show. Your chance. We get the latest updates on Avon and Brownsburg basketball with interviews of players and coaches. The show's air, show airs every Friday night at 6 p.m. on xrbradio.com and is available via podcast at audiosportsonline.com. Thank you, McDonald's, for your support of Brownsburg basketball. Panunis Pizza and Wings in Brownsburg has something for everybody, and you don't even have to leave home. Call 286-3500 for free delivery to Pittsburgh, Claremont, North Avon, and all of Brownsburg. Specialty pizza, calzones, breadsticks, and cheese bread all made in-house with Panuni's own hand-tossed dough. Tell them you heard it from XRB and get 10% off your next order. That's Panuni's Pizza and Wings at 1447 East Main Street in Brownsburg. 17. Trevor Lucas has 17. Trevor Lucas with 17 points tonight. One of the uh, one of the leading scorers. I think KJ might have more at this point in time. I'm not sure. For the Bulldogs, they but the team leads it 42 to 21. 156 left to go in the third quarter. All anxiously awaiting the check-in of uh, Andrew Hudley later on. Well, I'd like to see Kyle Hathaway get some minutes here too. We're going to see some of that other more of the Brownsburg lineup here if they maintain this lead. 147 left to go. Brown or Westfield controls. Tebby at the top of the key outside the arc. Zone now for Brownsburg. Christian or. Connor Oswald has checked into the game for the Shamrocks. Trying to get into Devin Reese. Reese dives on the floor on top of Tyler Houston. The ball gets away and Comer controls. Comer gets it back off to Houston. He gives it to K.J. Walton. Now Darren Ringo has it. And he will control and run the offense. I'd like to see him be patient, run some clock. We've got a foul on Westfield. It's going to be on Jonah Welch for the reach. That is the 15th foul against Westfield. And that is Jonah Welch's fourth foul. He was a little incredulous at that call. Steal Westfield. He was a bit. Christensen with the steal coming back the other way. Nice defense there in transition by Comer. The ball is knocked away by Thompson, but he fouled number 50, Matt Kinney, and Kinney goes to the line to shoot two. 113 left to go in the third, 42 to 21. Brownsburg leads it. Only Kyle Thompson's first foul. Kyle was in foul trouble early at the uh, Noahsville game, so he's kept out of foul trouble tonight. First three th- free throw rattles out. Front end of the one and one, or the front end of shooting two, he misses. That was a shooting foul. Matt Kenny's been active for Westfield, but he does only have two points here tonight, but he's been all over the court. Working hard. Got that second free throw to go. Substitution by Brownsburg, and here's Andrew Hubley. Look, the crowd knows that they want a three out of him. So everybody's the everybody's on Hubley three watch now, That's Chris. Right. He's a perfect three out of three. We don't want to ruin it, given the announcer's curse, but let's hope he gets open. Ball for knocked away by Reese as Ringo brings it across midcourt, and Ringo was fouled. Somebody has a big head uh, over there in the student crowd of Hubley. Second foul on Reese. Brownsburg inbounds. Ringo controls it at midcourt. Ball is kicked out of bounds by Christensen on the defensive effort there, trying to keep the ball out of K.J. Walton's hands. 20-point lead for Brownsburg here with one minute left, third quarter. Walton tosses it into Thompson, who gets the ball in the backcourt. Right inside to Comer for the layup. 
Sam Comer with the layup. We're under a minute. It's a 22-point lead for the Bulldogs, 44-22 here in the third quarter, and there's another steal. Comer comes up with it. Bulldogs the other way. They'll slow it up. Ringo brings it across midcourt, puts it between his legs. He's open. He's open. Come on, baby. Oh, Hubley did not shoot. Hubley could not shoot. He was – uh. He may have been about five feet past yeah, the uh, three-point line there. We're but I would have on. loved to have seen him Here chuck one up. Nope, oh, he couldn't get it. it. Walton steps inside the three-point arc, and a 16-foot jumper misses. Nice rebound by Ringo. Takes it to the glass and scores. Ringo with eight points now. 13, 12, 11 seconds left to go in the third. 24, I'm sorry, 46-22, Brownsburg. Welch controls it, gives it off to Connor Oswald. Oswald loses the ball. They get the ball ahead to Ringo, and that shot will not count if it goes. It does not go. So as time expires in the third quarter, another steal by the Bulldogs. The basket is no good on the other end. They lead it 46-22. to That's a 14-point lead for the Bulldogs. In some other action, Ben Davis leads Terre Haute South at the half, 30-14, to Noblesville. Over Harrison now, 46 to 24. Greenwood leads the Quakers at Plainfield, 24 to 14, a 10 point half to- halftime lead. The Hot Dogs of Frankfurt, who uh, the Bulldogs yeah. were successful in a road win earlier this year, they lead uh, the Warriors in Danville, 26 to 24 at the end of one. Jeff now leads Avon, 40 to oh. 36 at the end of the third quarter. Wow. And Tri West and Southmont, Tri West has come back and taken a pretty commanding lead. They lead Southmont, 39 to 26 at the half. Yeah, I'd like to see Tri West get that win. That helps set up tomorrow night. When it comes to fine jewelry, you know you can trust a certified gemologist that's been in business for over 50 years. That's Nelson Jewelers at 22 East Main in Brownsburg. Nelson Jewelers has just what you need for that special occasion or just because. Check out their website at nelsonjewelers.com to sign up for their newsletter and their featured item of the month. Call them today at 317-852-2306. Nelson Jewelers, a little out of the way, very much out of the ordinary. Real tight game at the, between two of the NBA's best at Bankers Life Fieldhouse tonight. The Trailblazers lead the Pacers 61-60, to 5.54 left to go in the third quarter up in the bigs. So uh, we'll see if the uh, Pacers can have that uh, trademark fourth quarter tonight and put a hang an L on the Trailblazers. Brownsburg outscored Westfield in that third quarter, 22-12. to 12, Has a nice 46-22 to 22 lead. Westfield controls. They go inside to Devin Reese. They've not been able to get the ball inside to him all night. That ball is kicked around, knocked out of bounds. The refs will confer, and it's going to go back to the Bulldogs. Andrew Hubley did check out for those of you watching his uh, progress here in this game. So Trevor Lucas will inbound for the Bulldogs. I don't know what Trevor said to the Westfield cheerleader who got the ball there, but she she thought it was pretty funny. She's uh, pretty broke up there on the uh, baseline. K.J. Walton and Ringo play a little catch outside the arc for the Bulldogs. They have a commanding 14-point lead. Lucas gets the ball to Thompson. Thompson back to Lucas. Now they got Lucas wide open for a three from the far side, and he hit it. 20 points now for Trevor Lucas. He came into this game at Virginia, 10.6. He now has 20, so a great shooting night for Trevor. 17-point lead for the Bulldogs. They lead it 49-22, seven minutes left to go in the game. Another steal by the Bulldogs. Thompson comes up with that one, gets it ahead to Lucas. Lucas to Ringo. Ringo with the ball on the near side, cross-court pass to Tyler Houston. Houston back to Lucas. Lucas looks like he's going to drive, kicks it to Ringo in the corner. Ringo now trying to drive, gets the ball knocked away, and he is fouled. That's going to be on the floor. That'll be the 16th foul against Westfield. You know, uh, Brownsburg, a little patience there, but these kids are having fun tonight in this game. They're ready to take some shots the moment they get open. They're ready to drive to the bucket, so the team's having a little fun. And here comes uh, number 21, Kyle Hathaway. Good to see him check in. He's got a few uh, points, including a three-pointer on this season. So Kyle Hathaway, number 21 for Brownsburg, to get some playing time here in this fourth quarter. Also some wholesale substitutions for the Shamrocks. Number 14, Aaron Bennett. The starting guard remains in the game. I got to tell you, of the Westfield guys, I've liked the way Bennett's played tonight. Yeah. He's undersized. He's a freshman. He's young. He's a competitor. Very, very competitive out there, uh, both offensively and defensively for Westfield. Her second free throw misses. 50-22, to 22, 640 left to go in the game. Brownsburg leads Westfield. Ringo, three out of four from the free throw range tonight. Had a little trouble here in the last half of the season, but... Got three out of four here tonight. Nick Fair and Kemp, Chandler Kemp playing a little catch. Fair with the ball in the corner. He's going to drive baseline. 
And he'll lay it up and in. 50 to 24 now. The 26 point lead. Driving to the basket and getting his shot blocked is Ringo. He and here comes fouled. Westfield the other way. Bennett to Christensen in the corner. Christensen looking to get the ball inside. He does. Inside to Kemp. Kemp, the turnaround jump shot, misses it. The rebound goes to Thompson. Thompson ahead to K.J. Walton across midcourt. Walton controls, gives the ball off to Ringo, and Ringo will run the offense. 50-24, to 24, six minutes left to go in the game. The Bulldogs lead. Ringo between his legs. Tries to go to the left side. Now he's going to go right. Gives the ball back up. Thompson, top of the key. Trevor Lucas Kyle. in the corner. And the oh. three bounces out. Kyle Hathaway missed that. Kyle Hathaway, number 21, misses it. Lucas with the putback for the bucket. And Trevor Lucas has had a really good game, close to the basket and far from the basket tonight, Chris. Yeah, that's 22 points now for uh, Trevor. Uh, when we talked to him this week, he credited his uh, father and his uncle, who his uncle is a uh, teacher here, works here, and uh, they get him in the gym here, and he shoots repetitive, shot, repetitive shots. He says that's helped him develop that good shooting technique. Kyle Hathaway is in the game, as we said, for the Bulldogs, along with Vashon, Mavunga, K.J. Walton, and Darian Ringo. Trying to get the ball to Bennett. Bennett now has it for the Shamrocks at midcourt. 5.20 left to go. It's a 52-24 lead for the Bulldogs. Christensen gets the ball back to Bennett. Cross-court pass. Controlling outside is fair. Almost has it stolen. Christensen gets the ball in the corner to Cam Shaw. Shaw is going to drive baseline. Lays it up and in. It's a nice take by Cam Shaw as he was double teamed as he got to the basket. Made a nice move to get out from up behind the basket and lay it up and in off the glass. He sure did. Cam Shaw, the senior there, 6'3 in height. And he made a nice baseline move. Hubley and Comer get set to check in for Brownsburg. So we're going to be on the Hubley three-point watch again. Mavunga gets the ball in the paint. Oh. Now he gives it up to Hathaway, who fumbles it out of bounds. Brownsburg's first turnover of this fourth quarter. Jordash Mavunga, no, K.J. Walton's going to sit down along with Darian Ringo. 52-26, 4.40 left to go in the game. Big lead for the Bulldogs as they, we can start to think ahead to the Tri-West Bruins tomorrow night. Saturday night, home game here, Troy. Westfield controls Christensen at the midcourt line. Looking for Bennett. Bennett is going to shoot a three from the near side. Just missed it. And the rebound goes, and it's push underneath. They're going to call the foul on Comer. That will be the third team foul, I believe, against the Bulldogs. Sam Comer's first foul. I'd like to see Sam get a bucket here, too, in this fourth quarter for Brownsburg. Bennett trying to get the ball in. He does. Looking for the shot, a turnaround jump shot, and fouled is number 44, Chandler Kemp. Kemp's knocked to the ground. The shot does not go, and he'll shoot, too. Or Big Dalton LaShawn still going to play defense there. And uh, he, he committed that foul. That's his first foul of the night. Westfield will go to the line. 419 left to go. 52-26 Brownsburg. They have controlled, been in control this game from the opening tip. Good friend Sheriff Dave Galloway here tonight. As usual, great Brownsburg sports fan, Sheriff Galloway. First free throw by... Chandler Kemp misses or rattles off the rim. Second shot is up, and it is good. 52-27. to 27. Westfield is going to press. Andrew Hubley brings the ball up, gets it off to Hathaway. Hathaway dribbles the ball across midcourt. Hathaway to Jordan Mavunga. Mavunga will control top of the key. Coming up on four minutes left here. Still trying to get Hubley an open three-point shot. Comer, Vashon, top of the key into Mavunga on the baseline. Puts it on the floor, kicks it back out to Vashon. Hubley fakes the three, or Hathaway fakes the three. Gets it off to Comer. Back to Hathaway. Hathaway hands it off to Jordash Mavunga. Mavunga going to drive, but the ball is stolen by Christensen. And they're reaching foul. And they're going to call a, not going to call a foul. They're going to call a jump ball in the possession arrow. Stays with the Bulldogs. We'll see Tyler Kurtz now check in for Brownsburg. Mr. Mavunga, a bit of a tough night for him, but he's doing his usual good defense and rebounding. 
is Jordash Mabunga, but he'll sit down now as Tyler Kurtz comes in. Tyler Kurtz, the 6'3 sophomore, number 14. Dalton Visham will inbound for the Bulldogs, gets it off to Kurtz. Kurtz will control at midcourt. Kurtz stolen away by Christensen. The ball knocked out of bounds. It'll remain with the Bulldogs. A little careless pass. Now, Brownsburg needs to keep their concentration. They don't want to go over there and face the wrath of uh, Coach Lynch by making a mistake here, even though they have a big lead. One of the good things about a, a big lead like this in the fourth quarter is you get to get some of these younger kids or kids yeah. who don't start or play a lot of varsity ball to get in there and work out some kinks. Kurtz brings it across midcourt for the Bulldogs on the inbounds pass and a foul. Oh, and Lynch is losing his mind on the bench. Boy, he is really upset at his team, just not getting in a good offensive set there. And there's no quitting this man. You, you've got to perform and execute right down to the last buzzer, no matter who you're playing. Coach Lynch is not happy. The timeout taken by Brownsburg. They lead it 52-27. to 27. It's a 25-point lead for the Bulldogs. Nothing makes you think of the future like holding it in your arms. The wonder of being a new parent includes planning for your child's future, and now's the time to start looking to someone who's been there from the start. State Farm agent Pete Fay in Brownsburg can ensure your life insurance will keep pace with your family's growing financial needs. So for more information on life insurance, visit State Farm agent Pete Fay at 431 East Northfield, Suite 100 in Brownsburg. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Ben Davis has defeated Terre Haute South 63-33. to They will host Avon tomorrow night on the west side at Ben Davis. Plainfield now leads Greenwood 30-29 to at the end of the third quarter. And Carmel continues to lead Lawrence North 39-27. to They're also at the end of the third quarter. Pacers trail by four at Banker's oh. Life Fieldhouse as they approach the end of the third quarter there. 69-65. And update that score. They are 139 left to go in the third. Now a 71-67 lead for Portland. Let's see how the approach of these Brownsburg uh, substitutes works out after that talk by Coach Lynch. Comer tries to get the ball baseline to uh, Andrew Hubley. He cannot. Kicked away by the Westfield defender. But Sean will inbound in front of the Brownsburg bench. Yeah, I think that was a good job by Coach Lynch. You want your substitutes to be sharp, look sharp, do good. You may need them sometime in the future. Sean trying to get the ball inbounds. He does, gets it to Comer. Comer gets the ball stolen away, and they're going to call a foul. And I don't – look like a nice defensive play there by Chandler Kemp from Westfield, but they're going to call the foul. They are in the bonus, so that's the eighth team foul. Comer goes to the line. That is the first foul on Kemp. On that earlier timeout, Chris – I didn't hear the whistle for the timeout. I heard a whistle, and I saw Coach Lynch as the free throw misses all the way out to the free throw line. Yeah. I thought he was getting teed up. Yeah, I know it. And uh, But he was not. But that's that intensity we talk about that's yeah. benefited this team so much this season. No matter what the timer score, he wants good, solid execution from his players. Kemp and Bennett playing a little catch. Devin Reese coming across the middle trying to get the ball, cannot. Now Kemp's trying to get a baseline pass off to him, and he has just swarmed defensively by Dalton Vachon and Ky Tyler Kurtz, and the foul's going to go against Kurtz on the reach. Slapped him on the wrist. That's the 15th foul against the Bulldogs, and that third foul against Kurtz in his limited playing time tonight. And there you saw an uh, example of Brownsburg defense not uh, slacking at all there. Tyler Kurtz and Dalton Vachon. having trouble getting the ball, and he does to number 44 Chandler Kemp, who misses the gimme. The ball gets ahead to how he traveled. The ball got ahead to Kyle Hathaway, and he picked up the ball about one step too early on the fast break. Defender jumped in front of him. He tried to go around him without putting the ball on the floor again, which he couldn't do anyway. Gets called for the travel. At the 243 mark left to go here in the game, 52-27. The Bulldogs lead it. Jordash Mavunga checked back in now for Brownsburg. They have Kurtz, Hubley, Jordash Mavunga, Hathaway, and Sam Comer on the floor for Brownsburg. Kemp, oh, that's Devin Reese stuck on. He throws the ball across midcourt, and Mavunga is going to run down and get it. Hathaway Good now job. controls Good it. Good hustle. Great hustle by Jordash Mavunga in the fourth quarter. Kurtz, top of the key. All right, it's time for the Hudley three. There it is. Hudley had it they open. He didn't take it. Oh, come on. I might be a little gun shy myself after that yeah, last time that's out. Right. Good point. <laughs> Jordan Mavunga controls top of the key, gives it off to Kurtz. Oh, that was a good one. Kurtz has got Hathaway. Hathaway trying to get it inside. Mavunga now has it top of the key. He's got a wide open lane. He drives in and he's fouled. 
Mabunga with just two points on the night there, but he saw an opening down the lane, went ahead and took it. Coach isn't going to fuss with that. That was a good drive, and he drew the Westfield foul. Avon and Jeff are complete. The uh, Orioles have defeated Jeff 56-50. to That's a final. Noblesville 54, Harrison 32, Frankfurt 44, Danville 39 at the half. And I, I'm sorry, Troy, you did say Avon won that game? Uh, Avon did win that game 56-50. to Good. That is the final. I'm glad for, for Coach Young. They, they needed to win. You know, first free struggled. throw by Mavunga misses as it rattles off the rim. Second free throw is good. 54-27 Brownsburg. 155 left to go in the game. Westfield controls. Ball is knocked away. Almost another steal there by the Bulldogs. Controlling the ball at the top of the at the top of the key as well. She's going to drive for the layup, and he is fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two. The foul is going to go against Comer. Hey, is that Comer's fourth? I got him with two. Oh, okay. I must. I, no, wait a minute. No, let's, let's see. That bet's just a second. Okay. I was way off. Good drive there by the Westfield player. They're competing hard in the end here. Brownsburg just too athletic and skilled for this Westfield group. First free throw by Welsh is up and good. It's his first bucket of the night. Pacers now trail by six into the third quarter, 77-71 from Banker's Life. Boy, Pacers have not lost too many home games at all. Second free throw rattles out, and the rebound by Mavunga gets it off to Kurtz. Kurtz back to Mavunga, back to Kurtz. Full court pressure by the Shamrocks. Kurtz having trouble getting it across. Finally a cross-court pass, Wow! but over to Hathaway. Hathaway gives it back to Kurtz. Hubbley with the ball, faked that three, doesn't shoot it again. Comer controls top of the key. All the student section wants to believe this shooter. They Comer know. back to Mavunga. Kurtz with it top of the key. Trying to get it inside. Can't get the ball to Hathaway. And yeah. reach-in foul going to be called on number 22, Spencer Tebby. That's his fourth foul. And Tyler Kurtz with a chance to score here. Tyler has six points on this varsity season. Of course, he plays a lot of JV. Chance for a seventh point here. Kurt to the line, 113 left to go, 54-28 Bulldogs. They've led the whole way. Never game has really never been in doubt since the early early goings. That's what we call taking care of business. You know, they were supposed to win this game on paper. You got to come out and execute and get the job done, though. Kurt's first free throw is good, 55-28. Second shot is up, off the front of the rim, misses. Rebound goes to the Shamrocks, pulled down by number 54 Sawyer Olson. Olson gets the ball ahead to Tebby. Tebby and Welch are the guards. Olsen controls top of the key. Looks to dribble, penetrate. Leaves that ball out there. Turn around, jump shot from 10. He got it. Nice shot. Sawyer Olsen, the nice turnaround jump shot from about 10 feet. Full court pressure out of the made basket again. Nice play there by Kurtz. Kurtz gets it ahead to Mavunga. Mavunga is fouled going to the hoop, and he will shoot two. It's going to be a push, a foul on Tebby. Short Ash Mavunga came into this game, as we said, Brownsburg's sixth man. He averages just over five points a game with, I th- think, his fourth or fifth on the team. He's like third on the team in rebounding. Jordash does a lot of little things that don't show up in the score column, but he's got a chance to get his sixth point of the ball game here right now. That's Tebby's fifth foul. He is fouled out of the game. So checking in is number 20, Connor Oswald. First free throw is up and good by Mavunga. 56 to 30. It's a 26 point lead for the Bulldogs. 42.8 left to go in the fourth quarter. Mavunga's second free throw is up and good. Westfield still running that fast offense out of the made basket. Kemp, or I'm sorry, Welsh springs the cross, goes right to the rack and wow. scores. Jordan Welsh, the, the uh, Jonah Welsh, I'm sorry, the 5'11 freshman. Got three points tonight. That was a nice drive right in the, through the heart of the Brownsburg defense. All right, Hubbley, your last chance to get it up to three. Welsh, or uh, the Shamrock's still playing, that's for sure. Kurtz controls it, goes cross court to Mavunga. Mavunga puts the ball behind his back. He retains it, gets it off to Hathaway. They've got Hubley for that three on the oh. corner, but Jordash Mavunga oh, takes a Jordan. three from the far baseline, and that'll do it. Transition basket the other way by Kemp misses. I'm sorry, by, by Jonah Welch misses. The final horn sounds. Final score tonight, the Bulldogs 59, the Shamrocks 32. And as you said, Chris, they expect they were expected to win this game. They were supposed to win it, and they won it. So they came out. They took care of business tonight on IU Health Cancer Awareness Night. 
here at Varsity Fieldhouse. The Bulldogs with an impressive effort both defensively and offensively. The Shamrocks have now lost 11 games in a row. And the Bulldogs improve their record to 13-2. and And they'll be home tomorrow night on the second half of the home-home uh, back-to-back as they host county rival the Bruins of Tri-West. We don't have a final score on the Tri-West game tonight. They were leading Southmont in the fourth quarter. Well, I Chris, guess you got a rundown on the scoring for us? Yeah, I'll give you one here as best I can. I think we're going to vote Trevor Lucas as the star of the game, led the team with scoring. I'll get you that in just a second. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't have – oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Chris. I, see, I flipped to Chris too quick there at the end of the game. Uh, so, Brownsburg comes in tonight again. Like we said, they were supposed to win this game, and they did. Uh, number five team in the state, the Brownsburg Bulldogs, are now 13-2. and two. Uh, Only two losses coming from the number at the hands – of uh, the uh, conference opener against the number one Carmel Greyhounds. They are 12 and one, number one in the state. They are leading Lawrence North tonight, 39 to 27 at the end of the third quarter. Hamilton Southeastern is at 14 and two. They're the number two team in the state. They're Brownsburg other loss. And they actually uh, host Lawrence North tomorrow night oh, okay. uh, also. So uh, Lawrence North uh, bit off a big weekend this weekend yeah. as they uh, have to take on number one, number two in the state. Chris? I don't have the date on it, but like we, uh, I mentioned to you before the game, uh, coming up, I believe it's next week, number one versus two, Hampton Southeastern versus Carmel. Uh, for the game tonight, uh, like we said, Trevor Lucas led the way in scoring with 22 big points. Uh, K.J. Walton didn't have to do much in the uh, second half. He had 12 points in the first half, just two in the second half for 14 points. Jordan Ashmavunga, a good night with 10 points. Darian Ringo played his usual solid defense, got a bunch of steals, some run-out buckets for eight points. Sam Carmel with two. Dalton Deshaun with two. Brownsburg wins. Uh, leading score for Westfield, I had Ian Christensen with nine points. Uh, they had a few scattered points from everybody else, but a solid effort by Brownsburg tonight. Got the job done. Again, that Westfield team, very, very young, Chris. Uh, they came into the game with uh, uh, a number of freshmen that got playing time tonight and a little bit undersized also. Brownsburg, very, very athletic as they have been all year, running up and down the court. A lot of steals. I don't know what the turnover mark was for Westfield, yeah. but it was a lot. And uh, the Brownsburg did what you're, what you're supposed to do with those turnovers. They turned them into points. So uh, They really did. Uh, points off turnovers tonight had to very much favor the Brownsburg Bulldogs. We do want to thank all our sponsors here for Brownsburg Varsity Basketball and Audio Sports Online and XRB Radio, WXRB. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by McDonald's, the Hendricks County Estate Buyers, Ivy Tech, Nelson Jewelers, Panunis, Pete Fay, your State Farm Agent, Westside Plumbing, and Wiley Palooza. Thank you, Chris, and thanks as always to all of our listeners on XRBRadio.com and our audiosportsonline.com listeners and viewers on audiosportsonline.com. For myself and uh, Chris Worley and our producer, Rob Kendall, the final score tonight from Varsity Fieldhouse in Brownsburg. The Bulldogs of Brownsburg, 59. The Westfield Shamrocks, 32. Thanks for joining us, and good night, everybody.